We're here with LSU women's basketball coach Pokey Chapman for a weekly interview in the Go Zone. Coming off of a big victory against Ohio State in front of a crowd of more than 10,000 in the Maravich Center this past Sunday. Coach, talk about that game a little bit, uh, what the margin of victory meant to you as well as the way your team played. You know, the margin of victory is obviously something that was, um, you know, nice to see. And it's not something that you always focus on the final score. It was the process of getting to that final score. And, you know, only the, the kids in that locker room, the coaching staff can truly appreciate what that meant because so many things came into play and in how we uh, strategized to play against Ohio State. And that's a compliment to their system of play. You know, Jim Foster's done a great job everywhere he's been, and we really had to make some adjustments in our half-court defense to sort of neutralize some of their strengths, and we were able to do that. 75-51 was the final score, but at one point in time, about nine minutes into the game, it was 22-all, if I remember correctly. What happened after that? You know, I, I thought uh, when, we, when it was 22-all, uh, there was no panic because we were doing the right things. Uh, we were getting a lot of touches. We were the team that was getting out in transition. You know, we talked to our kids all week that uh, almost 30% of their offense came in transition, so it was something that we focused on trying to stop. Well, in stopping their transition, we started getting out in transition. And it's amazing the momentum that kids and the confidence that they gained from getting a transition basket, and that carried over into the half court. And on top of that, several other things happened. It was nice to see Keanu Chaney hit that first jump shot in the game, and that uh, catapulted her into a better defensive game. But, I mean, from that point on, we just stuck to the game plan. Our defense led to offense. A lot of people got involved. I thought Sylvia Files was a presence on both ends of the floor, even when she didn't score the basketball. And we knew coming in they would try to double-team Sylvia, and we told Sylvia just sprint to the rim, draw attention, open it up for teammates, and that's what happened. First half, 15 nothing on uh, in your advantage as far as points off of turnovers. Talk about your, your play from your guards, your perimeter. You, everyone was focusing a little bit on Jessica Davenport and how their offense ran through her, but at the same time, your guards weren't letting that happen. You're right, and here's what's phenomenal about that, and we talked to the kids about it. We're used to ball screens, trapping ball screens. We didn't. We took the approach where we were going to slide through ball screens. We're used to getting out in the passing lanes, but a lot of their scoring comes from the paint, almost uh, about 57%. So we're really pinching the paint, trying to take that away, and we were still able to get points off a of turnover. So it's one of those mental things where we took away their strength and turned it into uh, something really, really good for us. And it was really the play of our perimeter. Obviously, it started with Sylvia in the middle, but to have our perimeter players pinched down, and if Jess got a touch, we were able to get our paw on the ball and transition into some easy baskets and do it all over again. And so many people got involved with that. You know, you start with Erica White, who pressured the basketball the entire time. Rashante LeBron had a ton of deflections, and Kiana Chaney's defense is starting to come into its own. You've played 11 games in a very short period of time. From what I hear, it's the you've reached 10 wins faster from a date standpoint than you've ever done it before here at the school or that LSU has ever done it before. But now you've really played, or you're about to play three games in what's ultimately 15, 16 days. Having long periods of time between games, I know the kids are focusing on academics right now. Is that helpful, or does he, can you over-prepare? No, you can't over-prepare. Uh, you know, I, I think it's the balancing act. You think about early on when we sat down and talked, we had, you know, five games in eight days. And so we were talking about that. Now it's the balancing act. I think it comes at a perfect time because they can just focus on academics. And it's not class academics. It's just finals academics. So you can really alter the practice schedule if you need to go in early in the morning, late in the evening, or at night. It gives us an opportunity as a staff to watch more tape and get individual work in. There's still recruiting going on. You know, when there's a day off, I'm out of town. Coach Sides is out of town. Coach Barry's back in. So you really can get a grip on everything that needs to be done. But most importantly, you can prepare for the tough opponents on the schedule to get you ready for conference play that second season. And that next opponent is Michigan State, ranked number 18 in the polls. You're going to their house. You get to play them uh, on the road. What's that going to, what kind of challenge is that for your program? And, and what, what have you done to prepare for them with the week to prepare? Well, you know, another Big Ten team, a well-coached team. Uh, you know, Coach Joanne P. McCauley, I can remember her back when she was at Auburn with Joe Champy. I remember uh, how good her teams at Maine were. I can remember the job she's done at Michigan State not so long ago competing in a national championship game. Uh, they're going to bring a, a great crowd to that particular game, first of all. Uh, yes, they've lost some players, but so has everyone else. But they're playing well. They've only lost one game. Um, you know, he, he, they have a 6'9 freshman post player. 
uh, that's a skilled player, but there's a lot more to their game. Here's what Michigan State does well. They play the matchup zone. Uh, and I think this is probably the third time I've said that because she's another product of Joe Champy who goes around the country, around the world, lecturing on that uh, matchup zone. Uh, then we played UL Lafayette, we played Tulsa, and now Joanne P. McCauley. So we've had some looks at it, but I think uh, as we've gotten into the season, it's another opponent that's going to present another matchup for us. Well, you're 11 games into the season. You're going to go face a team that's 7-1, has four starters who average double figures. What have you learned about this team so far that's going, what have you learned on the road that's going to translate into a better performance on the road this time? Yeah, I think you go back to the road performance where we didn't perform well in Waco, and I think we've gained momentum from that. Uh, I thought we were able to identify the error of our ways. I thought we grew from it as a team, but as individuals, we've put some things in place to ensure that it doesn't happen to that magnitude ever again. Uh, now, granted, the opponent's different, the challenges are different, but so are we. So it's nice to be able to have another measuring stick in that environment against a quality opponent uh, to sort of see exactly how much you've learned and how far you've come. And finally, just to remind everybody, we're about oh, 17 days away from the Katrina Relief Classic, LSU and Louisiana Tech, in the New Orleans arena. An update on uh, how LSU Operation Rebound is coming with uh, everything really progressing and getting close. It is. You know, right before I came up here, uh, we were talking about the banquet that's going to take place. We we're talking about the online auction that has been going great. Uh, Joe Carvalito, my director of basketball operations, excited about that. Coach Size with the banquet and uh, Coach Starkey, we we're talking about the commercials that are on. But we're trying to make sure the word gets out. We want people in the seats because every ticket sold will go back to Habitat for Humanity and Friends of Nord. And that's what we're going to do our best the next few weeks is to get the word out, get tickets in people's hands, get seats uh, get some butts in the seats, uh, and ultimately we want to win that basketball game. And a close second is to raise as many dollars possible for the relief effort. Well, certainly we're looking forward to that. We'll come back in a week. You'll have a game, then you'll have Christmas, and then we'll get ready to go down to New Orleans. Have a great week, Coach, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Todd.